This video will go through the study visits and procedures of the TRAC trial. The TRAC trial will evaluate whether a small dose of rivaroxaban, a blood thinning medication, would reduce cardiovascular death or major cardiovascular events in patients with advanced stages of chronic kidney disease. The study schedule has four phases, screening or run-in, randomization, follow-up and end of study. Clinic visits are required at screening and randomization, and then every six months until the end of the study. Telephone contact with participants will also be required as part of follow-up and the end of study. During the screening visit, written informed consent should be obtained and eligibility confirmed. Demographic and other baseline data listed here should be collected including a pregnancy test if the potential participant has childbearing potential. The EQ5D5L questionnaire should also be administered. P2Y12 inhibitors, phosphodiesterase inhibitors and non-study anticoagulants must be stopped prior to the participant starting running medication. The running medication should also be dispensed at the visit. Ideally, the participant begins taking running medication the same day as their screening visit. However, if this isn't possible, the participant needs to be on running medication for at least 14 days and have their randomization occur within 30 days of their screening visit. The run-in phase is for 21 days, with the range being 14 to 30 days. During this time, all participants will be asked to take a placebo tablet twice each day. The purpose of the run-in phase is to ensure that eligible patients are able to adhere to the treatment regimen. It is also designed to serve as a washout period. Whilst there are no limits to how many times a potential participant can be rescreened, it is recommended that clinicians use their discretion on whether to allow a participant to repeat the run-in phase. Run-in should only be repeated once in exceptional circumstances. Participants who complete the run-in period with at least 80% adherence and who wish to continue in the study will be randomised to rivaroxaban or the matched placebo. Randomisation activities include performing run-in study medication accountability, administering the EQ5D5L questionnaire if not completed at screening visit, collecting outstanding baseline lab results that don't inform eligibility status, randomising the participant, recording trial outcomes and bleeding events, and dispensing the assigned study medications. Both telephone follow-up and clinic visits should record outcomes and bleeding events and also discuss study drug adherence. At six monthly clinic visits, study drugs should be dispensed and adherence can be assessed by performing tablet counts, weighing the bottle, or using any other method to estimate the number of tablets remaining. Additional follow-up assessments that will be conducted at annual visits only include measuring weight, heart rate and blood pressure, administering the EQ5D 5L questionnaire and reviewing concomitant medications. The final visit is end of study, which will take place once the required number of primary outcomes have been collected and the study is terminated. The same activities as regular follow-up visits should be undertaken, except for the dispensing of study medication. Four weeks after the visit, a telephone follow-up will need to be conducted to record trial outcomes and bleeding events. Please note that no laboratory tests are required during follow-up and regional anticoagulation for hemodialysis should be continued as usual. All participants are to remain in the study even if they permanently discontinue the study medication, commence dialysis therapy, change dialysis modality, or undergo kidney transplant surgery where study medication is stopped. If a patient doesn't attend the clinic in person, data can be collected via phone, medical record review, or contact with family or treating clinicians. The COVID-19 vaccination status of participants will also need to be collected and entered in the concomitant medication form of the electronic CRF. Deaths due to COVID may reduce the statistical power of the trial and we therefore encourage the prioritization of recruiting patients who have been COVID vaccinated. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, please visit the TRAC website at tracktrial.org to watch other guidance videos in this series or read the Frequently Asked Questions page. 
You can also speak to your site's principal investigator or email the track team at tracktrial at georginstitute.org.au.